Right, we're back on the low cadence rabbit hole. So here we go. This was posted on Twitter by Knowledge is What, which has some interesting studies, but also some, maybe some not interesting studies. And a lot of people got tagged in this who say low cadence is bad or good. Um, mainly people got who are good. And this is basically what they did. So they got 22 well-trained cyclists, but they did it at like the same heart rate um, at 40 RPM. And then they did it on the free cadence, but the same heart rate. And basically what it shows is that 12 weeks flow cadence at moderate intensity doesn't improve the characteristics. Now, there was a lot of kind of people going, oh, yeah, well, but whatever. So we'll we'll have a look at this. But we'll leave, I've also nicked all of the papers Dylan Johnson used as well to kind of show why it's not great. Um, so anyway, this is the paper here. So we can read it in full. But basically, so these are the people that are quite old um, and what they did was that they tested it and they did it at like this heart, this heart rate. Now, there's immediately an issue with using heart rate because when you do lower cadence, your heart rate is lower, right? So automatically, the people are doing less power on the intervals, right? So that, again, is not ideal. Um, and also, the other issue with this um, is the fact that they're not measuring Newton meters. So that is kind of the effect you're trying to get. So automatically you can see some issues here because if we use heart rate and one, one lot are doing 40 RPM at like 250 watts and the other people are doing whatever cadence at like 280 watts, well, you know, you, you're not expecting to see any kind of gains, uh, like, you know, relatively, um, because, you know, these people are doing less watts. So again, but you can see there are some gains on the low cadence um, compared to the free cadence, like power at four millimolar, low cadence is higher. VO2 max, okay, it's not great, but it is an increase. And free cadence is also an increase, um, but this one is not. But you're not comparing really like for like uh, due to the heart rate max. So I'm not a massive fan of that um, automatically. Um, and then if we kind of scroll down to the introduction, we can actually have a look at sort of like how they did all the testing um, with the experimental design. Again, it's like 12, 12 days. They did three, three different days with one day rest. Um, but so what you can see if we kind of go down, yeah, it's basically just like a three minute active rest at a freely chosen cadence, um, but low intensity in between each low cadence with a 50 minute warm up. Um, they had 60 minutes of low cadence training um per week so it's kind of not the best study because people aren't really doing what they're going to do and also the other reason it's not really the best study is because it's not really comparing like what you would do it's just saying well you know these people did the similar ones at heart rate one did low cadence one did a high cadence like yeah but that's not really that's not really the point like you want to get the super high little torque uh meter so that study is not kind of great um, we can look at this one as well, and this is just stupid. This just compares low cadence versus high cadence on power output, which kind of everyone knows you're not going to expect it to be different. Uh, you expect it to be worse. So this one is kind of pointless as well. This one, again, is effects of low cadence versus high cadence. We've got the abstract here. And this one is also like stupid um, because it uses like single leg jumps with high intensity cycling or low intensity cycling. So immediately, like if you've got some jumping stuff in, like well, there's no point reading that paper. That's a waste of time as well. This is a, a systematic review. Um, and also, you know, the rate of 80 RPM can be considered low cadence. Well, it's not really. So this meta-analysis is kind of, or a systematic review, whatever they want to call it, is also kind of pointless as well. Um, because if you're going to say that, uh, then, you know, it, it's not great. And then here they say, okay, sometimes it has to be 40 to 70. But even so, um, I don't, like, it doesn't really show much. And also, if you can't read the whole the journal, there's no real point uh, going through it. Um, and then this is, again, effective isokinetic cycling training versus weight training. Um, and the isokinetic means that the force is going to be constant the whole time. But again, they use 80 RPM. I don't really understand how this is a cadence issue as much. Um, but... Anyway, again, it's like one of those studies where like it doesn't really show you much. So in conclusion, like we've got all these studies that Dylan Johnson has, has quoted. And it's not really having a go at him. It's just like he makes a video saying and concluding that it's not useful. But then when you look at the studies, it's like, well, none of them are really what people do. This is probably the closest study that I would say is good. Like it, generally, it's pretty decent um, in terms of the fact they are doing low RPM. They're, you know, 
Oh, actually, hang on a minute. I just... These people are doing different intervals as well. 4 by 5 versus 5 by 6 So, it, <laughs> this is not... <laughs> hang on a minute. This is... So, these people are doing half an hour of intervals. These people are doing 20-minute intervals. The heart rate max is different. Like, it's obviously going to be different for the RPM. So, again, that is kind of rogue. But this one kind of shows that it's not, like, a massive game changer in some ways. Uh, but what I would say with this is that the heart rate max is kind of the, the issue. And if we go into the study, like, I was sort of was going to leave that to the end because I thought people might not find it too exciting with it. Um, but what we will do, I don't know if they do, if they, they don't always show all these, the useful things. Um, yeah, here, yeah, it's just, it's just, there's not, nothing really that makes sense because they're, they're comparing the higher intensity heart rate as well. But I just don't think that's the best way of comparing it. I think it will be better to look at the watts, um, and then the Newton meters. And then like, that's the kind of adaptations you're going for. If you just look at heart rate, um, then it's not great. Like 73% of your max heart rate is pretty easy. Um, so these are probably like maybe not high enough new like torque levels. I'm not hundred percent sure. Um, which again, why it's kind of like, you can't really get too much out of it. Uh, just because it, it isn't really what you want to do. Um, so yeah, like conclusion of the second part of the video is none of these papers are really like useful because they're not representative of what you'd actually do. So again, I don't think any of this video here is too useful to decide um, whether it's good or bad because there just isn't enough evidence from the papers because, uh, yeah, okay, if you copy one of these, then they wouldn't be great, but that's not what people are saying when they say to do low cadence intervals.